and, and he kind of comes down to this. Let's look back at verse 3. He will judge between many peoples and set, will settle disputes for a strong nation's far and wide. They will beat their uh, swords into plowshares they, and their spears into cloaks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Every man will sit under his own vine and under his own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid. For the Lord Almighty has spoken. Is God your sovereign? Amen. Is God your king? I struggle. Let's I mean, be honest last night. Let's be honest with you. I struggle with submission. I get behind the car, and if you go to this church, you know I have to repent almost every week. That when I get behind the car, God is not always in control. He is, and don't, don't mishear me. <laughs> you know what I mean, because you're, you're me. I, I don't like who I become when you're in front of me. <laughs> And you know, every day I have to submit to that. I got to say, you know, Lord, that's an area that I'm really, really struggling with. Toby, you're not going fast enough, Hong Kong, get out of my way. <laughs> <coughs> but you wow. know what? God says, well, that's not okay. I know, it, and, and it is funny because I, have, I, I, I don't have time, but my family laughs at me. And there's only two of them, my wife and my son, and they laugh at me. When they're riding in the car, so they choose not to ride in the car with me. <laughs> because I, I struggle, but we all struggle. Yours might not be getting behind the wheel. You know, I might need to just get on a bicycle and start riding it. Your, yours might be another area. So is God our sovereign? Is he our king? See, here it says that he's going to rule over nations. He's going to judge. He's going to be so firmly in control that there will be no war. That all the weapons of mass destruction, all of the bombs, all of the guns, they're going to be beaten into usable instruments of survival. Not a war. That happens when God is on the throne. Amen. And that's what it's going to take. Is God sitting on the throne of your life? Is he sitting on the throne of our hearts? If he's not, revival will never take place. Let me go on. Verse 4 says, Every man will sit under his own vine and under his own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid, for the Lord Almighty has spoken. Hmm. Are we people of peace? See, if the whole focus of, of this passage is that God brings about a, a way that we can't manufacture ourselves. We cannot do the um, meditating and thinking to ourselves and calling to ourselves and talking ourselves into submission and to be peaceful. Peace comes from God. Are we at peace? Are we at peace with Him? If you're not seeking him, if you're not, if you're not walking after him, if you're not on his path, you're not at peace with God. Well, we at peace with each other. See, the, the great commandment is what? Loving God and what? Okay. Loving each other. So are you, are you at peace with your neighbor? Are you at peace with your family? Are we people who are pursuing peace? If, if we're pursuing animosity, anger, bitterness, or if that root is taken up in our hearts and in our lives, Guess what? We've got to deal with that. Because we'll never be the people God wants us to be. We'll never really taste the victory of what it feels like to really be one of the conquerors. And yet it's a promise that he's already given that if we'll do this, this is what happens. You'll be people at peace. We'll be able to get up in the morning and go, you know, God, I didn't really like yesterday, but I loved yesterday because I did it for you, God. Then I swallowed my pride. God, I wanted to hump that horn. I, I wanted to zip by it. And, and God, you wouldn't let me because, because I, I got up early, God, and I said, you know what? I surrender this to you. So I wake up the next morning and say, you know, God, I really wanted to go faster. But God, I'm surrendering that to you. And you know, it's a little thing. Until I get in an accident and kill somebody or die, and then I can go to heaven anyway. But that's beside the point. <laughs> I'm 
I look at the big picture. But you know, it's about surrender. It's about surrender. It's about knowing that we have a problem and saying, God, it's your problem. I surrender to you. Look at verse 5, and then I'll be finished. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods. We will walk in the name of the Lord, our God, forever and ever. Verse 5 puts it back into today. See, verses 1 through 4 are talking about the latter days, the millennial, the millennial kingdom, or a future that we have not even begun to see, even really in Scripture, because it's way beyond our comprehension. But verse 5 brings it back to today. It's we will walk. We will Because we've surrendered to him, because we've sought him, because we've found him. So what if we did this? What if we make today the day? What if instead of saying, uh, tomorrow I'll see God, you know, it's late and I'm tired. What if we said today at 6.38? <laughs> what if today, God, I said I'm going to seek you God? What if at 6.38 we said, Lord, Lord, I'm going to honor your word. I'm going to care about what you care about. And what if we said, today, God, I'm going to step onto your tracks. I'm short. <laughs> but we said, we're going to step on your path, on your tracks. And God, we're going to go wherever that path leads. What if you said, God, today, I'm at peace with you. I'm at peace with you. What if we didn't wait until tomorrow? Anybody here a procrastinator? <laughs> so you take too long to raise your hand. You <laughs> That's not talking to the world outside the doors. It's talking to these people. That when we get real with God, He gets real with us. I'm going to ask you to stand with me tonight. Now when we come to you, Jesus is going to play a hymn, and I want you right where you are. We're not so crowded tonight that if God is leading you to come and do something, we do altar calls. If you want to come and kneel up here, because God's dealing with you, come and kneel up here. But allow God <clears throat> access to your heart. One of our biggest failings is that we quench the Holy Spirit's prompting in our lives because we get uncomfortable and we get afraid. Afraid that we might have to C H A N G E. 